Back in January, sexual harassment allegations surfaced against Liberal Cabinet Minister Kent Hare. The complaints were about incidents that were alleged to have occurred both when Hare was an MLA in Edmonton and during his time as an MP in Ottawa. Hare resigned from Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's cabinet pending the outcome of an investigation. According to Mr. Hare, that investigation has concluded and he will remain in the Liberal caucus but will not get his job back in cabinet. Kent Hare joins us now for an exclusive interview. Hi, Mr. Hare. Thanks for being here. Well, thank you so much for having me on your show. No problem. So I just want to start off uh, in, for the sake of transparency. I have not seen the report. Uh, I spoke with the government. They are not planning to make it public for um, th they don't want to breach the integrity of the process. Mm -hmm. You have seen the full report? I've, I know the findings of the report. But have you read through the whole report? No, I have not. So you were just informed of the, the findings. findings by the Prime Minister's office? Yes. And um, you wanted to come on the show and talk about the findings. Well, I think Why? I think it's important as an elected official, you should go out and you should uh, face things head on, and so your electorate knows uh, what has transpired, and you're accountable to to them, the voters, the people I represent, in particular in Calgary Centre. So why aren't you getting your job back as a cabinet minister? Well, let's be clear. I ran to be the member of parliament for Calgary Centre. It is an honor and privilege to serve in that capacity. I believe. Uh, Calgary needs uh, a Liberal in the caucus and this is going to be what I am going to strive to do to the best of my ability as ably as possible. But you're not getting your job back as a Cabinet Minister. Was that the Prime Minister's decision? The Prime Minister decides who's in Cabinet and it was an honour to serve in that capacity and I believe that experience will help me be even a better MP. Okay, I want to go through the allegations that were levelled against you. Uh, the first one uh, was, was said to have occurred 10 years ago in the legislature in Alberta, and you made a co you were alleged to have made a comment uh, saying you're yummy to someone. Did you make that comment? I don't recall speaking to the individual. I don't uh, recall making the statement. It was 10 years ago. I'm not going to dispute the report. Do you believe the person that said that you? Well, does she deserve to be believed? She has to have her experiences, and she brought forward what I can only believe to be her honest recollection. Uh, she, also, transpired. she also said when she made that allegation, she was told to avoid being in an elevator with you. He would make comments, he would make you feel unsafe. Is that an accurate and fair assessment? Well, no, I, I, clearly not. I worked hard as an MLA to represent people. I tried to treat people forthright and honest in a friendly manner. And in my view, I tried to do that to the best of my ability each and every day of my eight years at the Alberta legislature. From what you seen in the report or what you were told, though, was that complaint said, was it, was it said to be founded? The report found that I made her feel uncomfortable. I accept that finding. And if I could go back 10 years and unring that bell, I would. But I can't, because the last thing I want to do is make anyone feel uncomfortable. And I've really strived at that probably for the last 28 years. But can I ask you when you're saying you don't recall saying it and then you're saying you're, you didn't make anyone feel uncomfortable in the elevator, is that truly, I guess, taking responsibility for how that person was made to feel? Well, of course. I, I, I take uh, responsibility for, for this. Clearly, the report showed that I was, uh, I made her feel uncomfortable and for that I am truly sorry. I'm sorry for that experience and I, if I could go back 10 years I would but I can't. Have you apologized to her? Yes, we sent an apology today. Today? You haven't spoken yeah. to her though? No, I haven't. There's another allegation that was later leveled against you that you, um, you grabbed someone from behind and, and you left your hand there. Uh, what, from your perspective, and again, I haven't seen the report, from your perspective, what is the finding on that? And what do you, you know, did that happen from Well, your the, the report found that I didn't act in an inappropriate fashion. Uh, clearly, there was uh, no intent or untoward nature in my actions. I'm a, I'm a C5 quadriplegic, okay? What that means is I don't have feeling or use of 96 percent of my body. In terms of my hands, I don't have independent movement or feeling in my hands. I don't have use of my triceps. When I move, it's in awkward and flailing fashion. I try my best to engage and I really just try to be warm and friendly. So you're denying 
Because that person felt uncomfortable and was saying it was of a sexual nature. Are you saying yeah. that that was not the case, and is that what the report concluded from what you've seen? Yes, the report showed that I did not act in an inappropriate fashion, in an untoward manner. There was also a lot of discussion um, around your behavior uh, towards the litamide victims and, and things that you might have said to constituents. Uh, in your statement, you said that uh, you've learned that some of your conversational style must change and that you recognize that you have unintentionally put people in uncomfortable situations. If it was unintentional, is that, again, really taking responsibility? Well, let's be clear. I can't and I won't take responsibility for things I did not say going back to December. But if we look at my conversation style, I have a very casual conversation style, whether I've known a person for uh, 40 years or four minutes, okay? And as a member of parliament, as a person who's 48 years old, I need to be more judicious on when that conversation style is and when it's more appropriate. Is that it, though? Is, there, is it just that you're a bit too informal? I mean, people were, were offended by the things that they accused you of saying. It wasn't just, uh, you know, well, a, a bit inf informal. Going, going back four, four, months, four months ago, I can and I won't take responsibility for things I did not say, okay? And I think it's important that we separate that to the important issues we're discussing today. The ones that we are discussing, to, to discussing today, you also say in this that you're going to strive to do better. Of course. How are you going to do that? Well, of course. I, I've learned throughout my life that uh, when difficult times face or when you face hurdles, you move forward and build on those experiences. And, and I think there are, are two ways in particular to this that I'm going to move forward. One, to be more mindful of my disability and how others perceive this. Look, when they, people see my arms move, they don't know there's not two working hands at the end of it. I have to be more mindful of my interactions with people and, again, with my conversation style. I have to understand that people may just be meeting me for the first time and gauge my conversations accordingly, and I'm going to do better in both respects. Did you, did you ever ha get any indication prior to this that, that you were being received the way you were? Yeah. Like, is this really the first time that, that, you're, that you're realizing your behavior has to change? Well, I've known for the last 28 years that some people are made uncomfortable by my disability. But is that really what this is no, about? Just to be no. fair, though, this is, I mean, saying you're yummy, I don't think has anything to do okay. with perceiving your disability. No, no, clearly that would be inappropriate in any circumstance, okay? That is not acceptable to call anyone that, okay? I think that's, that's clear, okay? I, I know that. People know that. It wouldn't be right in any circumstance. Because I just want to be clear that, because it does in, in some instances sound as though you're saying, I didn't do that, I don't recall that. Um, you know, what is the level of responsibility you're taking forward? Obviously, you're not in cabinet, right? You're, you're keeping yeah. your position in caucus, to yeah. be fair, and there are other people who have been kicked out of caucus yeah. for what, they, what they've been alleged to do. But, but what is the level of personal responsibility you're taking for this? I take lots of personal responsibility for this. Ten years ago, I made someone very uncomfortable. And for that, I am truly sorry, okay? If I could, like I said, this has been uh, difficult for her, difficult for people to come forward, and this has not been easy. So understand that I, I truly am sorry for making that person feel uncomfortable. Okay, thanks very much for coming in, Mr. Hare. I appreciate it. Thank you.